10 more categories, 10 more KISS records. Let's go. So it's been about a year now since Dylan from the Record Spinner YouTube channel started the very first KISS vinyl tag where he came up with 10 prompts for us KISS record collectors to fill in using all the records from our KISS collection. And it was so much fun that ever since then I thought, you know what, I'm going to start my own list of 10 so that we can continue the fun here in 2024. So if you're a KISS vinyl collector, be sure to join along in the comments, fill in the blanks using your record collection, and make your own video if you want. That would be super awesome. So here we go. Let's get started. Kicking things off, we have Back to the Stone Age. We're going to start off by showing the oldest record in your KISS collection. Not to be confused with last year's prompt, which was show the first KISS record you ever got or added to your collection. This year I'm talking about the literal oldest pressing that you have in your collection. And for me, it is a copy of the first album, but it is not a first pressing of the first album. I want to make that very clear. Uh, this is actually a third pressing of the first album. So, of course, the album came out in February 74 and then was re-released in summer around June or July with the new single Kiss in Time. And then I think in September is when the third pressings were released. And so that is what this is right here. And you can tell by the label here, it is an early Casablanca label, dark blue with the smoking man on it. And so that's one of the things about this video uh, that I like is that, you know, you get to learn more about the records in your collection. It's not just, uh, you know, show and tell. I mean, of course it is cool to share your memories and experiences, but one of the cool things is that you also get to hopefully learn a thing or two about what's in your collection. And so I was thinking that the oldest pressing I had was actually my first pressing of Hotter Than Hell, uh, which was October 74, but this actually beats it by one month. So yes, let me know in the comments what the oldest pressing in your collection is. For me, this is mine. If you do wanna see a first pressing of the first Kiss album, then head over to episode 85 of our podcast where Jeb literally found one on the day we did our 50th anniversary review. It was uh, perfect timing. So that is it for category number one. And for number two, we have, this is your last chance. Yes, another lyric from Monster, but I'm a huge fan of Monster. So for this one, last chance, this is where we're going to be showing the most recent edition, the latest edition to the KISS vinyl collection. And this one I had to think about for a minute because I haven't really been collecting as much vinyl as I usually do. And so I had to think, but I'm pretty sure it would be one of the more recent ones is this concert right here, this bootleg actually, from Sao Paulo, Brazil, August 94. Anybody who's seen that show or heard that show knows it's absolutely incredible. Of course, the Revenge lineup musically is almost untouchable. And so that's what I'm going to showcase here. It is not the full show, um, which is unfortunate. That would be like a two or three plus LP, which I'd be fine with, but... I'm just happy to have the one LP. The soundboard quality is awesome, which is always nice. And then you can see here the set list. Uh, this is mostly uh, 70 songs being performed by the 90s era of KISS, with a few exceptions. But uh, if you see this, I would definitely recommend getting it. I love it. And what I thought was funny was I was reading the back. It says, cover image courtesy of Shutterstock. I was like, why are they getting images of KISS from Shutterstock? And then I realized that what it's talking about is this image here with the ocean and the waves breaking over the, the chessboard as opposed to a beach, which I don't know why they chose that. I was thinking, why did they use an image of seagulls flying over a chessboard ocean with floating heads of Kiss for the album cover? Doesn't really make any sense, but if somebody has some overblown artistic explanation for it, I would sure love to hear it. But either way, here it is, the most recent edition of my Kiss collection, a uh, live bootleg from 94. And speaking of live albums, for number three we have I Feel So Good, I'm So Alive. This is where we're going to show a pressing, any pressing of any KISS live album. Of course, KISS has a handful of live albums, all of which are great in my book. But for this, I have to, of course, show KISS Alive. I Feel So Good, I'm So Alive. This is the album that kicked off the live KISS album series. Uh, this is the album that saved the record company, it saved KISS. So definitely a lot of uh, history, a lot of importance with this record. And you have the iconic gatefold with the album covers and the handwritten notes, which I'm sure were just incredible to look at back in 75, before the internet, before all that. And I'm going to be very careful with this because I don't know if it's a complete first pressing or even a first pressing at all, but um, it definitely is falling apart at this point. So I'm going to be very careful with it, but you can see here have some really nice, um, not sure about nice, but they're really cool 
Uh, old school sleeves here featuring some of uh, Casablanca's other offerings, including a couple kiss there. And then here is the back cover, the other side with just the Casablanca logo. Pretty standard, but pretty cool. And this does have a booklet. Again, I'm going to be very careful because it is, at this point, it's falling apart. But here is the booklet. I'm not going to open it. Um, I will just show the front, show the back. There it is. Um, yeah, my copy of Kiss Alive. All right, moving along now to number four. We have, this is going to be a fun one. So I wanted to make sure to have some fun ones. There's going to be some harder ones this year uh, in a little bit, but I wanted to have some fun ones, some cool ones. And this one is called Journey of a Thousand Years. Show the most beat up Kiss record you have. We're always showing the records that are like the most expensive, the most rare, and the most you know complete and pristine condition, mint condition. And yeah, that's really cool. But everybody has that one or two uh, clunker in their Kiss collection. The one that you just don't bring out, the one you don't show anybody if you want to impress them. And so, but today's the day where you get to bring that one out and show the one that just looks like it's been through the ringer. And for me, that would be this copy of Peter Chris's solo album. Actually, it's not mine. You can see it's actually Joey's copy of Peter Chris's solo album. And there is a bit of a story to this. So uh, I do at this point have an actual copy of Peter's solo album, one that actually does play and is you know actually playable. But about 10 years ago, I was looking for just a placeholder in my collection for the album until I got one that was actually worth playing. But I saw this one for a dollar and thought, yeah, yeah, I'll pay a dollar for that. <laughs> but uh, here it is, uh, Peter Chris's solo album, uh, really beat up. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. Oh my gosh, there's not even a sleeve with it. That's how bad it is. It's just the record shoved inside the jacket. So um, I'm going to hold it up here. And I don't know if you guys can see, but uh, yeah, this is definitely not a record that you would want to put on your turntable. I guarantee it wouldn't even get through one song without skipping and all that but either way yeah no it's just fun to kind of bring out the ones that uh, are a little less than ideal and you know what real quickly i do want to get a sleeve for this real quick give me one second luckily i have some sleeves lying around here so not that it matters i mean it's it's pretty beat up at this point but i am still going to take care of it most of my records in my collection are uh rescue copies copies that i found uh, either in, you know, like thrift store bins or yard sales or, you know, for really cheap or whatever. But there it is. Joey's copy. Thanks, Joey. <laughs> and for number five, we have Under the Rose. This is where we're going to show our copy of The Elder. I feel like after 40 years, this album is finally getting the love it deserves. People have more of an affinity for it, which I'm glad to see that. And so ever since the anniversary release on KOL, there's now a few different versions of The Elder out there. And so this is where we get to show ours. And for me, I'm showing my Japanese pressing of The Elder. I was going to show my first pressing from uh, the U.S. pressing with a clear sleeve. But uh, I thought, you know what? I think this one is way cooler. And you can see here, this is the reason why I wore this shirt. I didn't get the anniversary release from KOL, but I did get this sweet shirt. And you can see here, it's modeled after um, these images here. And so, yeah, how cool is this? Obviously, anything Kiss Japanese is automatically really cool. Um, you have both Eric Carr and Ace and the Elder and Killer's outfits. So super cool there. Love the colors, the pink and the blue, the green. Super sweet. But um, you can see here on the back is a lyric sheet. But I do want to go ahead and actually open this up so uh, we can take a look inside. So this is actually uh, loose there. You can see this is the cover. Nothing on the back, plain white on the back. But uh, there is the really cool cover there. And here is the lyric sheet that it came with. Of course, the lyrics are in Japanese. There is one side and there is the other. I always love uh, lyric sheets. I've always thought lyric sheets were great. And um, here is the album itself. Of course, it has the iconic gatefold here with the table and some of the text describing the story. And on the inside we have, okay, so this is also a clear sleeve. There's just no logo on it. The other one I have has the KISS logo on it. Um, printed on the sleeve, which is really cool. But this is still a clear sleeve. There's the record, and I like how it has a uh, flat top but a rounded bottom. Is that a Japanese thing? I don't know. That's still really cool. But uh, yeah, nothing um, crazy about the label itself, but still really cool to have a um, Japanese pressing of the Elder. 
Okay, so at this point, we're over halfway. Hope this is fun for you guys. I'm having a great time talking about KISS records. And for category number six, we have I'm a 2000 man. I love the fact that it's 2024 and we're still here talking about KISS records, KISS record collecting. There's still new releases. There's an Eric Carr release coming next month for Record Store Day. So that to me is just fascinating. I can think back to starting uh, collecting back in 2009. And the fact that it's 15 years later and it's still, you know, collecting not only that, but it's come back in a really big way. So I thought that we could celebrate a whole category talking about records that were pressed after 2000. And for me, you know, I got to show my copy of Sonic Boom. I did a video on the channel last year where I actually got this for the first time. So if you guys missed that video, go back and check it out. It was so much fun. Thank you, Glenn. I absolutely love this record. And of course, the gatefold is sick. I'm in love with this gatefold. The red background, the white autographs, of course, the guys and the makeup and the instruments look fantastic. But just all around, a sick gatefold. Um, there's the back cover. But I really want to dig in and open some of this stuff up because this album was packaged really well. So, yes, it came with a really cool gatefold, but it also included this amazing poster. And I am going to unfold this for you guys because I loved this photo shoot so first of all we have the new outfits the new at the time the new outfits for sonic boom but uh, this photo shoot was awesome i love the background i love the set sometimes kiss uh, photo shoots they just get in front of a background they uh press snap and boom there's your photo but i always liked when kiss added some level of depth and uh some props and some you know some sort of set design so this was a really fun photo shoot i always love looking at these photos and the fact that this record came with a huge poster is super cool and so there's that and also the record itself here is the slip cover one side there with the lyrics on the other again i love lyrics being printed there and this record is actually the blue version so there was of course a red blue a green a purple and then regular black and this one is a really sick blue color and uh yeah the album for me is an awesome record i know some folks are divided on that but i really don't care the songs are great the solos are great the harmonies are great uh modern Day delilah is probably a top 10 favorite kiss song of mine anyway so there it is my record that was pressed after 2000 okay moving on now number seven we have i believe in me this is where we're going to show our favorite or any pressing of any 78 solo album and i know i showed peter chris's earlier but trust me this one's in a lot better condition this is actually Paul Stanley's solo album. And I think in last year's video, I showed all my pressings of Paul's album for the category where we had the most of a certain copy. And that was really fun, but I don't think I really got too deep into anything, I actually, you know, pulled anything out. And so I wanted to actually show some more things this year. And I will go ahead and pull out some of these uh, inserts because this one actually comes with everything, which is why I wanted to show this. This is very special. Uh, Paul's album for me is my favorite of the 78 solo albums. But this is the original sleeve it would have came in, featuring all four of the solo album covers there. So I guess back in the day, if you didn't know that all four had one, that's how you would know. So there's the original sleeve, and this is the order form where you could uh, send in and order anything you wanted from this list. And looking at some of these prices, man, it's absolutely crazy. $5 for a t-shirt, $6 for a belt buckle. This poster is $2.50. I mean, you could literally move that decimal point over make it 250 and you know that's your modern day price right there but uh still really cool to have you know the actual inserts uh included this is uh of course before online ordering and that's how it was done back then the kiss army was still kind of new the fan club at the time so it's really cool to have all this stuff how it remained intact um this well for this long is beyond me but super glad to have it and of course here's one of the coolest things about the whole solo album experience was the posters that they came with because not only do you have some really cool artwork for all of the members but here you can see where this is where uh, they would kind of puzzle piece together and you could put all four together and create uh, one giant poster so yeah this is really cool these albums were also really well done uh, i will show the record here which is in a regular black uh, regular white sleeve so as to keep that one in pretty good condition but yeah so there you go there's the the record right there the label record and film works for number eight we have the cheapest stuff is all i need so again we're always talking about the records that cost the most oh man you wouldn't believe how much i spent on this it cost an arm and a leg on and on and on well i thought since i'm from the midwest and it's always about you know how cheap something was how much of a bargain did you get i thought we could do a category about what was the best deal you got on the kiss record 
What was the best deal you ever got? And for me, it was on this copy of Asa Solo Record. I got this for free, paid zero dollars. You're thinking how? Well, it was a buy one, get one free. Uh, I said, I'm gonna buy this one, whatever it was, and then I'm gonna get this one for free. And considering it's a 2014 re-release, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Um, and what I liked about these 2014 re-releases is that they included all the original inserts. That, to me, I thought was a nice, nice touch. And so, again, here is the original sleeve that it would have been um, included with, featuring all four of the solo album covers there. And also the poster, which, of course, Ace is, is super cool with the yellow stars at the bottom there. And again, here is where it would connect to one of the others and create the big poster of the four individual ones. Does it come with an order form? So this one did not come with an order form, which is kind of weird to me. I thought they included everything, including order forms. Um, maybe I was wrong on that so that nobody got the wrong idea and you know actually sent one in with money in a money order form. But So maybe that's why they didn't include the order forms. But either way, it still does come with the original sleeve or a replica of the original sleeve and a replica of the poster. So yeah, not a bad deal getting Ace's album for free. Okay, so number nine, we're getting close to the end now, but number nine is called I Took a Flight into Tokyo. Now all these, of course, are Kiss lyrics. That's how Dylan started it last year. That's how I'm continuing it. And so this, of course, is from Samurai Sun, which means we're gonna be showcasing a Japanese Kiss record. Anything Japanese Kiss is super cool. And I know I did kind of get the ball rolling earlier with the Elder, but that's not what I'm gonna show for this one. For this one, I'm gonna show this copy of Destroyer. Now this, believe it or not, I actually got at church, uh, which is kind of funny because this is the album that supposedly has satanic messages in reverse. Not that I believe it actually does, but it's just kind of funny. Uh, no, some folks at church said, hey, I know you're a huge Kiss fan. We went and took a trip uh, to Japan in 1980, picked up this record. It's kind of been sitting around ever since, and so we know you're a huge Kiss fan. We thought we would give it to you, pass it on. And that to me is super cool. Number one, this cover is very vibrant. I wish I had another copy with me. But uh, something about this copy in particular is way more colorful. It pops way more than any of the other ones. But uh, on the back here, you can see in the bottom corner. I'm sorry if there's a glare. I'm trying to avoid the glare. But uh, yeah, some Japanese lettering in the bottom there that signifies it is from Japan. As if that wasn't enough, you have a uh, pullout with the lyrics in Japanese on the back and a black and white image on the front, which I love. And then if you open it up, I think there's just some, yeah, some more lyrics and uh, some photographs and some really cool stuff there. So uh, love any any pullouts, any extras, any visuals that you get with the Kiss album, super cool. This one also has a clear sleeve, it looks like. Is that a Japanese thing? It's, it's, it's gotta be. Uh, but no, very interesting design, having the, the flat top with the rounded bottom, super cool. Again, nothing crazy about the label. It just says Destroy Your Kiss with the song titles in Helvetica, it looks like. Um, nevertheless, still really cool. Uh, I think that's it. But again, awesome. Japanese Kiss stuff is super cool. What I want to know is what uh, Japanese Kiss record you have. Okay, so we've reached the end. This is number 10. This is the last prompt. I know some of these have been a little bit harder, kind of like that last one. Not everybody will have a Kiss Japanese vinyl record. That's totally fine. Uh, still make your list even if you don't, but I wanted to end it on a little bit of an easier one here. This one is simply called I Was Made For Loving You. Show your favorite Kiss record. Very simple, very easy. Doesn't matter what era, doesn't matter if it's vintage, doesn't matter if it has all the inserts, is it beat up, it doesn't matter. Show your favorite Kiss record that you own. And I know I showed this in last year's video, but I would be lying if I showed anything else other than my copy of Monster on Picture Disc Vinyl. So this we got at the Expo in 2013 in Indianapolis where Gene Simmons was a special guest. And in 2014, brought mine back, had Tommy sign it, and then had Eric Singer sign it in 2015. And even though I may not get Paul's at this point, I still think it's an awesome record to have in my collection. Monster as an album is a top five for me. I know some folks think, ah, it's underproduced garbage. For me, it's Dirty Raw Kiss. Uh, I love the songs. They're heavy, they're fast, they're in your face. The whole record rocks from start to finish. And so this album has always been uh, one of my favorites. But this particular pressing, of course, definitely takes the spot 
um, as my favorite. Here's the back cover here is a shot, a live shot of the stage. This is before the spider stage that was debuted in June 2013. I got this in May 2013, so this is right before the spider stage, but still a really cool image there of the stage. Sorry for the glare if there is. I know that the uh, the PVC sleeves have a kind of a glare on them, and I've even heard recently somebody reach out and say, hey, Xander, you really shouldn't be using PVC sleeves. They're not good for records. Well, does anybody have any alternatives? I would love to you know for any of the vinyl community out there if you have any alternatives to PVC sleeve that still offer you know transparent display uh, qualities. You know, let me know because I would love to find an alternative to PVC sleeve so as to preserve these uh, for a lot longer. But anyway, so yeah, that's uh, that's the last one on my list. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and please. In the comments, let me know what your list is. And if you're a KISS podcaster, a KISS YouTuber, I'm talking about my friends Rob from the RBTE podcast. I'm talking about Pasquale and Claudio from KISS Army Nation. Anybody, I mean any of the podcasts, Brant from In My Head, uh, Glenn from Tales of a KISS Geek, any KISS YouTube channel, any KISS podcast, get involved in this. Share your 10 using these prompts. I want everybody to join in on the fun. That was the fun of last year's. Was that everybody uh, took this and ran with it. And there was like a whole day where I spent one time, you know, just watching all these videos from last year. And so I can't wait to do it again and see everybody's collection. Thank you guys so much. And be sure to stay tuned for next Sunday's episode of the Kiss Army Things podcast. You're not going to want to miss it. I had Joey Casada on. It's going to be an incredible conversation talking about Kiss, talking about 10,000 volts, talking about drums. It was an awesome episode. You guys aren't going to want to miss it. So please stay tuned. Like and subscribe. Follow Kiss Army Things on Facebook and Instagram. And I will see you in the next video. My name is Xander. Peace.